They've been watching Speedway here at the Groveway Stadium for little more than a year, but in that time, the followers of the Milton Keynes Knights have really become used to the best kind of action that the National League can provide. Well, you may remember that a year ago, we were here to see the debut of Bob Humphreys as a much-needed heat leader for Milton Keynes, and really it's been his consistent point scoring that it's been at the heart of the development of the team. Well, tonight they have the chance to pit their enthusiasm against the undoubted experience of the Rye House Rockets on a tight track that really favours the brave as much as it favours the, the fast. Well, once again, the top man here will go forward to the ride-off for the Green King Man of the Series. It's a National League fixture, Milton Keynes against Rye House, and your commentator is Dave Lanning. So the rider who has indeed made such a difference to the Milton Keynes Knights, Bob Humphreys, originally from Australia. I remember him so well from our last series when he gave he was the man of the match. Bob Humphreys then, the, and question number one, number one on his back and uh, number one in action as well for the Milton King side here at this uh, little Buckinghamshire track. And Ted Hubbard, the rider in white for Rye House. We remember him in the man of the match uh, last year when in the final, that uh, somewhat dramatic final, Ted was the man who caused all the trouble bringing the field down, uh, none the worse for his little bit of a pile up last year. Ted, of course, a stalwart of the Rye House Rockets on loan from Hackney. So the lineup across the grid on the inside, it's Ted Hubbard. Next to him in the blue helmet, kind of we have Chris Robbins for Milton Keynes. Grid three has Carl Fiala, Milton Keynes specialist in yellow and black. And on the outside, where he loves to start from, Bob Humphreys in red. So this is heat one. Humphreys was in trouble at the start, and it's Hubbard who shows, and the Milton Keynes pair made a terrible hash of that first corner, and it's in front now, Ted Hubbard for Roy House, in second place, Car Fiala, in third place, Chris Robbins, and Bob Humphreys really uh, had a terrible first corner. Well, Roy House at the moment, uh, when he's done a couple of away matches in the National League, they've won one and lost one, and by one point they lost at Boston. Milton Keynes, they're placed... Uh, well, second in the National League at the moment, having done eight matches, so it's a little bit of an imbalance. Mind you, they've never ever beaten the Rye House Rockets, who really are one of the top sides in the National League section, and it looks like they're going to have to work hard tonight, too. This is Hubbard. He used to be called Hurricane in his early days. And there's Carfiala, and right at the back is Bob Humphrey's not looking too happy. The distance, as you can see, it's 324 yards around here. A tight one by British Speedway standards, this Milton Keynes circuit. But uh, not so tight for Rye House. They're used to riding the balloons, of course. This is quite small as well. And they're going to open up with five points. Five points to the Rockets. One only to the home side, Milton Keynes. And uh, Rye House having started with a maximum 5 1 heat win. Let's have a look at the lineup from the inside there in blue. Harry McLean. Scotsman, in fact, rode for Scotland uh, just last uh, Thursday or so. Next to him in yellow and black, we have Ashley Pullen. Grid three has Greg McNeil, and on the outside in white, Kevin Smith. Harry McLean riding in blue. Next to him in yellow and black, it's Ashley Pullen. Grid three has Greg McNeil on the outside, it is Kevin Smith. And this time it's McNeil who gets to the corner first for Milton Keynes, going after him hard in uh, the right house pairing. But McNeil really rode a brave first corner there. He leads Heat 2. Coming through in third place there, battling through is Harry McLean for the Knights. And uh, this is more encouraging for Milton Keynes. McNeil leads it. And they're going after him hard is Ashley Pullen. Third place, Harry McLean. So at the moment, it's a 4-2 for the home side. Remember, they trail by five points to one after Heat 1. They had a battle really between McNeil and this Australian fine for... The Knights and Ashley Pullen for Roy Harris. There's the distances there, and there's not much to choose between battle for first and second and third and fourth. And now Pullen should have made his dive there. McNeil still held him back there. That was some brave riding from the young Australian. Again, Pullen trying the inside run at him. Now he'll dive. Now he'll try and go through. Takes him out very, very wide. And down he goes. And that was a little bit on the hard side. But he wins it. In first place, it's Pullen. Second place, Harry McLean. Third place in white was Kevin Smith. There's the rider who went down. Greg McNeil. And it looks as though the rider in yellow, and that is Ashley Pullen, is going to go out. Here it is again. Let's have a look at it. You can see Pullen goes into the corner there, takes him very, very wide, seems to miss the turn. McNeil's looking up. There's nowhere for him to go but down. There he goes. So the drama started pretty early on in this National League fixture because referee Nick Barnes has 
excluded Ashley Pullen, the rider in yellow and black in heat two for unfair riding and has declared the result as the riders had started on their last lap. So the winner, in fact, was Harry McLean in blue for Milton Keynes. In second place, Kevin Smith in white for Roy Housen. He has awarded the third place point to the rider in red who was, in fact, uh, knocked off there. That was Greg McNeil. So that was a 4-2 heat win for the home side who've narrowed the gap now. It now stands progressively five to Milton Keynes, seven to Roy House. Here's a character who always gives us a run for our money in Angus Speedway, Calvin Malarkey. Number one for the Rockets in the white helmet colour here in Heat 4. Remember him in the Man of the Series award last year. This is Heat 4 in the lineup from the inside. Derek Harrison, the rocker in red for Milton Keynes. Next to him we have Kel Malarkey in white for Roy Hayes. Grid 3 has Greg McNeil, who was somewhat ignominiously ejected from a leading position in his first ride. And on the outside, it's Ashley Pullen, the rider, who indeed gave him the elbow. So it's going to be interesting to see their clash again here. And again, it's a Pullen from the outside. And down again goes McNeil. And that time, it looked as though he got a bit of a nudge from Malarkey. But uh, anyway, there he's down. And he's out of heat number four. It got a bit tight there. And it's the Rockets in front as the battle goes on. Leading it is Ashley Pullen, second place is Kel Malarkey, and now Harrison going hard after him for that second place. There's the battle then, in second place there is Derek Harrison, and Harrison will have a dabble, no doubt about that. Trying to push a hole through, almost bore a hole through, and does so, past Malarkey. Takes him out very, very wide indeed, and Harrison's having a rare old go here. He's now on the back wheel of Ashley Pullen, he's running a tremendously brave race. Look how tight it's getting there. They're going every which way. They're into the last lap, and Harrison battling hard, trying the inside run. Oh, almost missed the corner. So, too, did Pullen. Pullen holds him out. We're going to get a great race here. This is heat four. Into the last corner. The big effort must come now for Harrison, but he really has earned his spurs here. Trying the inside run, and I think he is just going to do it, and he has. Really. A superbly brave race from Derek Harrison. He missed the start. He got knocked all over the plate. And Harrison, grid three, has Carl Fiala. And on the outside in blue, it's Harry McLean. And it's interesting to note that all four of these riders have won one race at least tonight. Heat 11 with Milton Keynes, two up. And away they go. And Harrison hasn't made the start. In fact, it's Carl Fiala who's made it. It's the Rockets in front. And Harrison comes bursting through into second place there. Last a second in one big swoop. And now he must chase hard after Carl Fiala. So it's Fiala leading in second place. It is Harrison in third place. Coming bursting in through the inside grid there. It was Ted Hubbard. But uh, this is developing into a bit of a struggle now because Fiala has got his tail up and is kicking for home. And Harrison is battling. You can see that Harry McLean's having a bit of a double at uh, Ted Hubbard now at the back too. So we've got two separate races and this is a battle up front. Looks oh, missed the corner there and Harrison is right on his back wheel as we move into the last lap. 324 yards to go and Harrison trying to go through the inside gap. Fiala holds him off. Harrison will run at him and try and push him into the corner. Fiala's riding well though. He's holding him off I think. But no, he's going to go through again. Harrison has come again from last to first to win heat number 11. Second place here was Fiala, who hardly put a wheel wrong. Third place was the rider in white, Ted Hubbard. But Derek Harrison truly is having a field night. So let's just have a look at the last few exciting moments of that last lap of heat number 11. You can see Fiala seemed to have lost it here down the back straight. On the inside, it's Harrison had the run on him, but Fiala almost recovered there, made the line just lost a little bit here, got into some sticky stuff, just drifted off the middle line. Harrison's got by far the middle, gets his wheels back into line there, has slid again through on the inside, clearly takes the lead there, up on his back, a little bit of a victory roll, but Derek Harrison really riding magnificently. Well, once again, the right house team manager, Len Silver, playing uh, what he hopes will be a bit of a joker here. This is Kevin Smith coming into heat number 12, which is an ultimate race. You can see this Groveway Stadium really set in the quite picturesque Buckinghamshire countryside. Most of the crowd gather under us. It looks a bit sparse. Don't believe it. There's a goodly crowd here this evening. Heat 12, Milton Kings, two up, two races to go. Bob Humphreys, the rider on the inside in red. 
recovered after a disastrous first race. He's got a second and a win after that. Next to him in grid two, those long legs sticking out, Bobby Garrett in yellow and black. Grid three has David Ashby, very steady, two thirds and a second so far. And on the outside, Kevin Smith, a win, a second and two thirds in the reserve berth for Rye House Rockets. Heat 12. from the inside and Smith from the outside and Smith who beat Humphreys earlier on gets around the outside again or does he? Shoulder to shoulder Humphreys the last to shut off he leads it second place Smith and third place it's Garrett and at the back it is David Ashby there they come hurtling into our camera here on the pit corner at Groveway Stadium and it's getting pretty close there isn't a lot to choose between first and last here Smith, very spectacular there, almost uh, lost it again on that bottom corner, and Humphreys is in trouble. Humphreys has packed up, and that is a tragedy for Milton Keynes. We just got a glimpse of him there, the point gave up the ghost. Right House step in to first and second places, and that really is disaster for the Knights. Oh dear, oh, whoa, oh my. Milton Keynes having recovered from being six points down, having grabbed a two-point lead, now look as though they have thrown it away through Bob Humphrey's bike, and they're going into the bottom corner, Smith is in trouble, and Smith has hit the fence down there, and it looks as though he was in trouble as well, the bike really must have given up, he seemed to lose his steering, there's Kevin Smith, the drama continues to pile up here at Grove Way, we wonder what can possibly happen next, Smith has ripped his leathers there, but uh, he's going to pick up his bike to push it home, but in fact, it's not going to work, Kevin, because the track staff, uh, one of the track staff, in fact, helped to bike up there. I don't think it can possibly work. The rules clearly state a rider can push on if he has been unassisted. But unless we were terribly wrong, it looked as though a track staff man picked the bike up. So I don't think that point's going to count. So what did happen to the rider in second place here, Kevin Smith? On the last lap, it looked like the Rockets were well set. Bobby Garrett is a mile in front and unconcerned about the drama which is about to happen. There's Garrett. Now look at Smith. Smith goes straight in there. He must have lost his steering completely. He goes down. Garrett goes on unconcerned. David Ashby goes into second place. Smith picks himself up. We can see the track staff man running across the bike. Now did he pick it up or not? Let's have another quick look. No doubt about it at all. There's the track staff ride man. There's the rider turning away. That's Kevin Smith. The referee absolutely right. Outside assistant. Point doesn't count. So on the shoulders, the capable shoulders of Derek Harrison now lies perhaps the responsibility for the points in this National League match. What a match it's been. We really have had drama untold. But now we move into this last heat, heat 13 with Milton Keynes just one point in front, 36, 35. That drop point in heat 12 could be oh so important because it's unlikely we're gonna get a draw. It looks like it's gonna be a win either way. Harrison hasn't been beaten, but he faces here Ted Hubbard, a rejectable, formidable opponent from Rye House, a rough, tough customer. Hubbard there, just making sure the clutch doesn't overheat on the inside, just taking the back wheel off the ground. Harrison doing this here, in fact, we've got three almost frozen in the slow motion there, three at the line. Inside then, Hubbard, next to him, Harrison, unbeaten so far. Grid three has Huey Saunders in yellow and black on the outside. Andy Graham, he's won his last two races. The Knights looking strong here as they go into this last race. Remember, they've just got to split the heat to win the two National League points. Heat number 13 with everything to race for. Saunders who gets away, Hugh Saunders leads it, and Harrison going hard under him into first place, Harrison in the lead, Saunders in second place, and uh, he took a very, very careful look at that third corner, Harrison making sure he didn't give him a nudge, that was clever thinking, and Saunders going around the outside, Harrison on the inside, and we have a battle royal here, if it stays this way, the Knights must win it, now Harrison stretching away, now here comes Andy Graham, under Hugh Saunders, and Saunders knows he's there, Oh, look at this for racing. What a climax. Harrison's going to win it, unless he does something extraordinary silly. Graham's moved into second place. Saunders is third. And really and truly, we have had a National League fixture to write home about. Just one more lap to go. Harrison, well, he's simply got to be man of the match. He leads it. He's had to do all his racing except for one race from the back. He's done it the hard way. He's looked absolutely invincible around this roadway circuit. He's going to wrap it up for Milton Keynes. The crowd will love that. One, two, four. 
Derek Harrison and Andy Graham a 5-1 for Milton Keynes and they then win this memorable National League clash which really did have everything by 41 points to 36. Well, surely nobody will argue about the man of the match this evening. Derek Harrison, that's what he looks like without all his paraphernalia on, girls. And uh, I think you might agree that he has the look of a bank clerk rather than a gladiator. But he's our man of the match, the Green King man of the match, no doubt about that. Ron Wilson taking Mr. Timothy Bridal. He's the Green King free trade director and son of the chairman and joint managing director who is here to do the honours this evening. That's £50 to all. Yeah.